Makers and circuit pythonistas, it's Professor John Gallagher, and I'm here to help anyone who is having trouble keeping your circuit python libraries up to date. Don't run away and join the circus. Get to your terminal and install circ up. You'll be able to type a single command to update all of the files in your lib folder, and you can even use circ up to install new libraries without having to download the entire library folder, find files, and drag them over. And you can also have circ up look at your code.py file, figure out what libraries you need, and automatically install those on your board. While it requires a bit of work to install, circ up is a great tool that everyone should be using. Let's get it and learn how to use it. Now, there is a detailed learn guide online that Melissa LeBanc Williams had created. It provides a written guide if you need it. There are lots of great details in here. Thank you, Melissa and Adafruit. I did stumble a bit when setting things up, so I'll provide some additional context that I think might be useful for my students and other newbies who want to use this awesome tool. I'll demonstrate the install on my Mac. Definitely consult the Learn Guide if you're not on a Mac and you run into problems. You can also ask questions on Adafruit's Discord. I'm only going to show the very basic commands that I think most folks, including my students, will use, but there's a lot more available in CircUp. Check out the Learn Guide to find more. Now, CircUp does an update base circuit Python, so I'll assume everyone following this tutorial has already updated their board to the latest circuit Python release. If you don't know how to do that, see an earlier tutorial. As a reminder, you update Update base circuit Python by visiting circuitpython.org, finding and downloading the UF2 file update for your board, putting your board in bootloader mode. How to do that is always described in a native fruit learn guide for the board and dragging over the fresh UF2 file to your board in bootloader mode. And when it's in bootloader mode, it should have the word boot in the name. The board restarts, and it's called CircuitPy, and you're ready to rock. Nicholas Tullervey has created the tool called CircUp. Shout out to Nicholas. It's free, open source, and now lives on the Adafruit GitHub pages. Now we'll use the terminal to install and use CircUp. Terminal is text-based. It doesn't have a nice graphical user interface, but CircUp is much faster and is so much better at making sure that your boards are updated that CircUp really is worth learning to use, even if you're a newbie. I'd say anyone from high school up should be able to figure out circ up. And if you're younger than that and you're using it, awesome. Keep at it, young hacker. So we'll install using terminal. We can launch terminal on the Mac with spotlight by pressing command space, then typing terminal, press return, and terminal will launch. Command plus will make the font larger if you need it. Command minus will shrink it. And in terminal, we enter the commands after the percentage sign and press return. Now, there are a few things we need to make sure that your computer, not your board, has installed before we can install CircUp. First, your computer needs a version of Python. I believe it's version 3.8 or greater. We also need Git installed. Git is a tool that your computer uses for version control. We don't need to know about the specifics of Git to use CircUp, but we do need to have it on our computers. And we need to install something called pip. Pip installs and manages software packages. We don't need to know how to use pip, but we do need it for CircUp. To check if Python is installed and what version you've got, enter the command python3 space dash dash version, all lowercase, press return. Either you'll get a message you don't have Python installed or you'll get the version number. Head to python.org and click download. And if this number is larger than your Python's number, you can upgrade. Just download and open the file on your computer and follow the install instructions. I just installed Python for the upgrade, and as a pro tip, you can repeat the last command that you entered in the terminal by pressing the up arrow key on the keyboard, press return to execute version again, and we see that we have the upgrade installed. Now all Mac users should have git installed and you shouldn't have to worry about upgrading git, but if you're curious, you can check with the terminal command git space dash dash version and press return. Next, we have to make sure that we have pip3 installed. Pip3 is a program that installs other programs. Now, Python should have installed it. Now, we can verify this and upgrade it if we need to. The first time I typed this, I had a typo, so you can ignore that. You should enter pip3, that's P-I-P-3, space install, space dash dash upgrade, space pip, all lowercase, press return. My result says requirements satisfied. If you needed pip3, you'll see install messages while it's installing. And again, if you're on Windows, check the Adafruit Learn Guide for CircUp to see if these instructions differ for you. Next, we have to make sure that pip3 setup tools are installed. And to do that, enter pip3 space install space setup tools. Setup tools is one word. Press return. They're likely installed, but if not, you'll see some install messages. And now we're ready to install CircUp. And to do this, enter the command pip3 space install space CircUp. Remember that C-I-R-C-U-P, all lowercase, 
press return, and the install is pretty fast. If you got here, congratulations, you've just installed CircUp, and you shouldn't have to repeat these steps again. Now we'll demonstrate how CircUp works, and feel free to grab any of your boards and follow along. I have a board plugged in. I'm going to open the CircuitPy volume, and I see files in here. The one that says boot underscore out dot text. If you open that up, that will tell you the version of CircuitPython that you're using. Again, make sure that you upgrade CircuitPython on your board before upgrading the library files. Now, on this particular board, if I open the LIB folder, I can see I've got a lot of libraries in here, and most of these libraries were installed about a year and a half before I'm recording this lesson. I want to upgrade everything in LIB. And I'm going to leave this window open and position it here so that you can see how the date modified will change when I run the command in CircUp. So to use CircUp, I'm going to launch the terminal again, command space, enter terminal, and press return. And I'm going to shrink the font size with command minus so that you can see the terminal window and the LIB folder in the finder. And you know what? Before running CircUp, it's not a bad idea to make sure that you're using the latest version. Now we've got the latest version that we just installed, but to make sure that you upgrade, you can enter pip3 space install space dash dash upgrade space CircUp and press return. These installation requirements are satisfied. That's great. So let's start with the CircUp commands. I'm going to clear the screen so we start fresh here. I'd like to only show those commands on the screen, so I'm going to enter clear and then press return, and our screen clears. And the first command that I'll enter is CircUp space list. This also shows the version of CircuitPython installed on the board and a nice list of everything in your LIB folder along with the version number that's currently installed and the latest version that's available. So I see I've got a lot of things that need to be upgraded here. And now this is where the real magic happens. This is the only command you really need to enter to upgrade things. It's just circ up space update space dash dash all press return. CircUp first tells me what version of CircuitPython I'm running on the board, and then it upgrades all of the libraries that need updating. And watch how the date modified column of every library in my finder will change to say today. CircUp is even smart enough to know that if there are some modules that require other modules, for example, the Adafruit debouncer button module also requires Adafruit underscore ticks, CircUp knows that and it will install the extra modules too. Now this whole process shouldn't take very long and it should be far less error prone with with less work than searching for the individual files and copying them over. When you're back at the prompt, you can smile at a mission accomplished. And if you want to upgrade all of your boards, once you've upgraded CircuitPython on each board, remember bootloader and drag the UF2 file for that board over. Just repeat the command circup upgrade dash dash all on each board you plug in, and you can update those boards one after the other. Very cool. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can install new modules that aren't on the board. And just so you can see that I'm doing that, I'm going to delete everything inside of my LIB folder by dragging it into the trash. Then to install a module from scratch, just enter circup, install, and the module name. Here I'll use NeoPixel, all one word, all lowercase. And once again, CircUp decides, hey, you might need the module pixel buff with this. So it installs that support module as well. I think this was the newest development. I hadn't used pixel buff in earlier lessons that I'd created, but it's so nice that CircUp knows this and takes care of this for me. So that's great. But what if you don't know the exact spelling of the module or you don't want to type out the entire module name? Well, the terminal program doesn't support tab completions currently, but we can add or modify a file that the terminal we use called a ZSHRC and tab completion sort of acts like code completion. When you press tab, the terminal will try to fill out your command or guess at a file name. And even though we have to go through some unfriendly steps and type a couple of gnarly looking configuration lines, we'll only do that once and tab completion will then make CircUp much easier to use, saving you time and reducing errors. So we enable tab completion by putting a couple of configuration lines into a file that Terminal uses. This file is called .zshrc. We're going to create or modify that file using an editing program called Nano. So to open Nano and either create or edit this file with that name, we're going to enter after the percentage prompt, Nano, N-A-N-O, space, then the tilde character. If you don't know where that is on the US keyboard, you can find it just above the tab key. It's shift accent mark, then slash, dot, Z S H R C, all lowercase. Once that's entered, just like this, make sure there are no errors, press return, and your screen will clear and you're in nano. Now, I don't have any configuration commands in my ZSHRC file. In fact, I'm creating this file for the very first time. You probably are too, but if not, and you've got some configuration commands in here, just use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move to the very end of this file and press return to start a new line after anything that's above it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enter two lines. The first line is one word autoload space, 
dash, and then the character capital U, so not a lowercase, space, comp init, C-O-M-P-I-N-I-T, semicolon, space, and then comp init again, C-O-M-P-I-N-I-T. Take your time, make sure you've got it just as you see it is here, and press return so we can enter the next line. And that's going to be eval, E-V-A-L, space, double quotes, dollar sign, open parenthesis, underscore, not dash, underscore, capital C-I-R-C-U-P. So circ up, underscore, capital complete, C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E, equal sign, and then in lowercase, Z-S-H, underscore source, space, circ up, close parenthesis, close double quote. Again, make sure you have it exactly as you see here. And once again, if you're sure things look just like this, remember to be precise. Computers are not forgiving. We're going to exit out of the nano program and save our work. And we do that by holding down the control key on our keyboard and typing X. Control X brings up the save line that you see at the bottom of your terminal. We'll enter Y for yes, since we don't want to destroy what we just entered. And you'll see the file name. This is exactly what we want. You'll have different directories before .zshrc, but that's okay. You're terminal knows what it's doing. Just press return and you're done with your modifications so that you can use tab completion with circ up. This goes into effect the next time terminal launches. So why don't we quit out of the terminal program and relaunch terminal. I'll shrink down terminal so that you can see what's happening in the LIB folder. And let's type together so that you can experience the awesomeness too. Let's enter the command circ up space and let's just type in the letters I N just like this and then press the tab key and oh, ho, ho, terminal completes the option for us. It knows that the only option available for circ up commands that would start with I N is the command install. So it typed that out for me. Very cool. But after this, I need to tell circ up what to install. And then if I start typing in N E O and press tab here, ding dang, terminal completes the library named NeoPixel. It's the only library that starts with N E O. But my friend, you might wonder, Hmm, what would happen if there are multiple words that start with that same word fragment and then I type tab? Well, let's try this out together. Let's backspace over the word NeoPixel and instead let's type in Adafruit underscore. Most of the CircuitPython libraries start with Adafruit underscore. Then we'll press the tab key and Great Caesar's Ghost, my friends. We were asked if we want to see 329 possibilities. You may even have a bigger number here since CircuitPython is constantly adding modules and CircUp will know about all the new ones. So for me, this will take up 165 lines, but I want to see what's available. So I'm going to press Y. And wow, there are two columns of all of the libraries that start with Adafruit underscore, and you can scroll the terminal up and down to try to find the modules of interest. These should be listed alphabetically, and you can, of course, type out the name that you want once you read it above, like the name of this distance sensor that we're going to be using in a future lesson, which is VL53L0X. And then if I press return, CircUp installs that library, as well as the Adafruit bus device library that this library needs. And we see that's also in the LIB folder over here in the Finder nice and you can also copy any of the names that you want to use I'll first re-enter the command circ up space install space Adafruit underscore then I'll find the name of this unfriendly accelerometer called LIS3DH highlight those easy to mistype letters command C then paste that after Adafruit underscore command V press return and circ up installs that and it would also install the bus device but it's already installed that it's like circ up knows everything amazing so now I'm going to show you one more command. I'll quit out of the terminal first. And in this last bit of awesomeness, I'll demonstrate how CircUp can install all the CircuitPython libraries needed by any code.py program that's installed on your board. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to once again delete all of the files that are in my board's LIB folder. And I'm going to open up a code.py file in PyCharm. You can use any code.py file that you want to drag over to your board. Just make sure that it's named code.py and it's on your board. Now this program uses libraries from these import statements. So there's board and digital IO, but those are built into CircuitPython, but NeoPixel and Adafruit debouncer need to be installed. And this is another nice thing about CircUp. You don't need to remember which modules are built in. Instead of looking these up, you can just let CircUp handle it for you. 
Also, the two modules that it is installing, NeoPixel and Adafruit Debouncer, have two support modules that are associated with them. And if you didn't know to manually drag over those two extra modules, your code might crash the first time you run it. Again, Circup has got your back. You don't need to know any of that. So to show you the awesomeness in action, we'll head back to the terminal, and at the command prompt, we'll just enter Circup space install space dash A in lowercase, as in the first letter of the alphabet, press return. Circup has now installed Debouncer, Pixel Buff, Tix, and NeoPixel on our board's LIB folder. Tremendous. And since we're in PyCharm, which we configured to work with CircuitPython in a prior lesson, we can see the results in TO. Now this next bit for TO is only if your code is in PyCharm. You can also execute this code in Moo without TO if you'd like, but since I'm using the very awesome PyCharm as my editor, I'll enter TO space dash list and press return. We can find the line with tty.usb modem, this one here. I'm going to copy the entire line from slash dev through the last number in USB modem, command C, then enter TO space and paste in the line I just copied with USB modem, press return. TO is running. This should show any output from our CircuitPy board. Let's head back to PyCharm, save the code with command S, back to terminal. And we can see what happens on our board as we press button A, the red light shows. As we press button B, the blue light shows for as long as our finger is down on the button. It also counts the presses. Nice. So hackers, you have now got Circ up on your computer along with tab completions. You're ready to easily install and upgrade any CircuitPython libraries that your project needs. You are now most ready to continue to hack.